I don't know if this story is levity or if it's dire. I don't know. Maybe what happens come November is like right before Civil War slash World War Three kicks off. The aliens emerge and they're like, all right, you're done. We're taking over. And anyway, here's the news. Aliens might be living among us disguised as humans or in a base inside the moon, according to new Harvard study. <laughs> I wish, I guess. I am. Life would be a bit more exciting if like a thing happened. We're sitting here going around in circles, escalating tensions, and it's just like, ugh, what do humans really need or want? Well, there are many, specul uh, many speculative theories and conspiracies, but now we're getting it straight from Harvard. Therefore, it is not a conspiracy theory, my friends. It is research. Okay, so basically what they're saying is there could be aliens disguised as humans, underwater bases, on the moon, or my favorite theory is ancient aliens or ancient apocalypse, okay? So one of the theories is that they're not actually aliens, they're humans, the remnants of a lost technologically advanced civilization that remain here watching the primitive versions of their own species. It's kind of like Horizon Forbidden West, if you've played those games. It's like, uh, spoiler alert, I guess, because the game is relatively old enough at this point. But in the video game, the story is, uh, civilization is wiped out by an AI self-replicating machines. And then there's two factions of surviving humans. One faction leaves Earth and they continue to advance technology and become effectively space gods. The other faction is a bunch of machines buried in the Earth, re-terraform the planet after its destruction, and then genetically engineer, well, not really engineer, but like test two baby, new babies, and then create a civilization. It's kind of a catastrophe, so there are a bunch of primitive humans, but that's the general idea. I love this, uh, this conspiracy theory. It's not really a conspiracy theory because I think it's funny that people call like flat earth and like aliens conspiracies as if it implies the government is in on it or something. I don't know what you'd call it, but one of my favorite stories is the ancient civilization one. That's why shows like Ancient Apocalypse are so popular. The general idea is that there was an advanced uh, uh, race of humans who invented a bunch of stuff and got really, really good at what they do. And then civilization collapsed for some reason. Atlantis, perhaps. They maintained their technology in secret. And then other humans started to repopulate the Earth, completely unaware of the lost technology. And then after a couple of generations, they just don't even know what's going on anymore. A really good, uh, uh, I guess, imagination uh, uh, um, example of a story. I don't know what you'd call it, but uh, the, sh the show Dr. Stone, it's an anime about one day everybody on earth turns to stone. I don't know, like thousands of years pass and there's uh, some like this main, the main character breaks free from his stone prison and comes back to life. They discover how to do it. And it's really, it's really, I love exploring this because they find that there are other humans that are alive, but they don't understand basic technology that we did because that information is lost to them. And that's what would really happen. Now we have Harvard speculating, and uh, you know, let me read you the story, and then we'll talk about this, because it's good, it's good fun. Aliens might be living among us, a new study by Harvard says. I don't know if you can call it a study. That's kind of silly. A new paper suggests extraterrestrials could be living underground or in a base inside the moon. The study by Harvard University's Human Flourishing Program further puts forward the idea that UFOs or unidentified aerial phenomena may be spaceships visiting their Earth-based alien friends. Perhaps they, they take a look at this. Someone's building like a, a drone, U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army. I don't know what this is that they, they say. Uh, I don't know why they're showing this image. I don't know if it's real. It looks real. Making some kind of flying saucer for the army or something. So here's what they say. Uh, let's see the, th the third crypto terrestrial. OK, the first, the four theories of aliens on Earth. The first are crypto terrestrials, a technologically advanced ancient human civilization that was largely destroyed long ago, e.g. by flood, but continue to exist in remnant form. I got a fun story for you on this one. I'd love to make a short film about it. The second are hominid or theropod crypto terrestrials, a technologically advanced non-human civilization consisting of some terrestrial animal which evolved to live in stealth, like underground. The paper suggests these could be ape-like hominid descendant uh, of unknown intelligent dinosaurs. What's funny, I love this because these are like, somebody went on Google and just looked up these old conspiracy theories because that's the, um, 
was that they believe that there was an advanced species of dinosaur that when the collapse happened, moved into caves and evolved to live underground, but they're super intelligent. So they were able to develop technology in underground cities, but their skin can't handle surface light. So they have to wear suits and things like this. And so they don't walk freely among us on the surface. The third crypto terrestrials are our former extraterrestrial or extra tempestrial crypt. I love this time travelers. These would have arrived on Earth or elsewhere in the cosmos from the human future and conceal themselves in stealth on the moon. And the fourth are magic crypto <laughs> earthbound angels. And they go on to say like they're, they're fairies, elves and nymphs. Uh huh. No, I don't buy that one. And they're like, it's hard for people to see outside the box. Maybe they're fairies. This is the hard hitting science you're getting from Harvard. But I do. I do love this. So let's entertain. Uh, and we'll start with the back and move to the front because I love this one. I love the first one. So elves, fairies and nymphs. I say I discount that outright because magic is just science we don't yet understand. And so uh, the way I describe it is if you if, I saw the commercial for the new Apple iPad and it's like really it's, it's a it's a it's flat. It's smashed. And they're like, look how thin it is. If you were to give the tablet to like, I don't know, a medieval queen, she'd be like a magic mirror, because when you look at it, you see your reflection. And when you press a button, it then turns a screen on. And with the front facing camera, it shows you your face. It's a magic mirror. If they were to pry it open to look inside, what would they find? Runes carved in stone. That's how they'd perceive it. They don't know what chips are, batteries. They, did. they would just see rock, some kind of strange rock with all these different runes carved into it. Well, those are conductors and semiconductors and things like that. And so, like, even me only has the most rudimentary understanding of, of computers, right? Electrons moving through yes and no gates, right? I could probably, if I had to, given several years, starting from the ground up, make some kind of mechanical computer because I understand the basic algorithm of calculating math. I have, I have actually learned that in grade school where they show you the post, they, they take the note cards and they punch holes in them and then you put the pen in it to sort, sort the cards. That's really fun. And that's like rudimentary. And then getting to the point where you're making like silicon chips right over my head. And so what would happen if civilization collapsed? I'd be able to explain the general idea to my kids and they would not be able to comprehend what it is because they can't see it or understand it and the information gets lost. But anyway, so fairies, elves, and nymphs, I say no. Because this idea is that if we saw someone who was an elf, it would just be an alien. And if they had some technology, it wouldn't be magic. It would just be an advanced species of alien. So sorry, no magic. I, I don't know. Although there are some theories that magic is real. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle and the double slit experiment, many people believe actually show evidence of magic. And that is the human perception can influence reality. But they have poisoned us with fluoride. And fluorocarbons so that our pineal gland is no longer working. Yeah, I don't know about none of that. Magic. Okay, let's go back to uh, future aliens. Uh, uh, I, I like this one. A lot of people argue that like gray aliens are actually from the future. And so that's why they're humanoid and bald with big eyes. Okay, maybe, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's whatever. That one's kind of boring. And they're studying the past. Second are uh, aliens, an advanced non-human civilization. So this is the, this is the dinosaur ones. And I love that, like, general aliens don't, aren't one of the theories. Can we just get, like, aliens from another planet came here to study us? So these are, like, dinosaurs that lived underground or ape-like descendants that live underground or something. Sure, fine. My favorite, however, human crypto terrestrials. This is the most fun because there's a lot of ideas that entertain this more than the rest of them. Not that I think it's true or anything, but, uh, you know, if, from the future, ooh, I, well, are they really? I mean, I don't know. Do we have time travel? Maybe. That's boring. In a thousand years, we have time travel. We go back in time and study ourselves. Huh? Okay, I guess. We could just watch like every podcast ever made and this massive collection of data, unless it's destroyed in a war, perhaps. I like this one. Human crypto terrestrials. So I jokingly tell this people, uh, I, I have a, a kind of like joke fictional story. And like the funny thing is it goes over the head of anybody who's not a Christian. But the general idea is this. On Venus, they say, we believe that Venus was once, was once Earth-like until a runaway greenhouse effect destroyed the planet. And uh, who knows? Maybe there may have been life. So here's my sci-fi story that I made based on that. So you have Venus life. That's where humans and most animals, most, come from. Uh, many animal species are gone, by the way. And so what happens is there are increasing reports of a runaway greenhouse effect impacting the planet. May or may not have been man-made. 
as the carbon dioxide levels begin to increase, the atmosphere is is it's, it's getting hotter and hotter. And so what happens is the government comes together, the military, and says, we need to build a large space vessel, probably in orbit, and we need to begin the terraforming process of Earth, our nearby neighbor that can sustain life. And so they do. They create the Ark Project, where they load the DNA of each animal, which of course is two different sets, two of each animal, so that they can create and then reproduce these species. Which gives us the Precambrian, Precambrian explosion. All of a sudden, on Earth, on uh, life on Earth explodes, and we see in the fossil record all of this life everywhere. It is some time later that, as they're preparing the terraforming project, things begin to get worse and worse on Venus. Political instability, economic crisis, cause civil uh, fertility rates to collapse, war and famine, and so what happens is the remnants of the most dominant military says we have to launch the Ark Project and take as many people as possible as we can to Earth because this planet is dying. And they do. And in their big vessel, maybe there's only a thousand people. What would those people be good at? How many of them would be scientists? How many of them would be experts? The reality is very limited information. But on this vessel, they do have massive databases of advanced technology. So they decide to head to Earth. And they travel there, and it doesn't take too long relative to human lifespan or anything. Um, I think, what is it, like years, like 20 years or something? Let me, let me, let me, let me pull up the math. Uh, how long would it take to get to Venus? Uh, four months. I was way off. Take four months. That's crazy. How long would it get? I thought, I thought Mars was like years. Mars is um, nine months. Okay, all right, I was way off. So four months. So anyway. So the ship launches, leaving this dying world behind, and the, the, the atmosphere is acidifying, and everyone's dying. Blech. And then this ship comes, and what do they do? Well, they send down a few of the lower class people. It's, a, it's total military. There's a general, he's in charge, because it's a military operation, or corporate, whatever. And the people who go to Earth begin building. And then we can stop there and just have fun and say... This is this created Atlantis, and then you have limited technology, limited lifespan, so you have this vessel in orbit. Maybe it docked on the far side of the moon or something, and the people on Earth, after several generations, have no understanding of this advanced technology, but they're not necessarily living in squalor. They're building the basics to reform society. After several generations, you have—let's uh, let's, let's just do this. There is a civil war among the Ark vessel. The military that's in command of it— is, you know, basically saying we're going to keep running things the way they're supposed to be run. But now it's been a few generations. The main leadership is dead. And, you know, one guy says it's time to establish democratic forms of governance. The military is done. We've established bases on Earth. Human life is expanding. And the guy who's in charge says, no, this could be the end of humanity and the loss of everything we've ever learned and know and technology. We cannot just give it up to people, to, to, the, to random people. And so a civil war breaks out among the remaining factions, the people who are on Earth establishing the colonies who have a rudimentary understanding of those who are, uh, you know, because these are like grandkids. They see ships shooting at each other. And then uh, there's a civil war. The second in command or whoever who, who li tried leading the civil war to reform the government uh, or their system of governance is exiled to the far side of Earth and says, you go away now. And uh, then... They basically separate themselves from those who are on Earth because the technology is heavily damaged. And uh, that's where we are. That's what that's what happens. And so you then end up with the people on Earth being cut from their cut from the ties of those who are up in the sky. And it's a joke story that I tell people that basically talks about how human cryptoterrestrials, an advanced civilization, the creators of Atlantis, that somehow were lost long ago in this great civil war in the sky. The technology was damaged and they were cut off from communications from those on Earth, but managed to survive. Now, what if it's better than that? What if the civil war in the sky resulted in the death of all of the progenitors? These are just humans, you know, from like 50,000 years ago. And so they're very similar, probably shorter. And the ship is heavily damaged, crashes on the far side of the moon. And now it's just wreckage, ancient technology, languages we can't understand. What if that's it? And so it's what's really happening is that humans on their space missions Go to the far side of the moon. That's the, that's a conspiracy theory. Find this vessel and the corpses of the remnants of ancient humans, and they unlock massive technologies. Or they discover 
that they've been waiting there the whole time, living in their ship, generation after generation, watching humanity, and they dispatch ships periodically to watch what humans are doing. What if it's just advanced humans watching? Could be, who knows? We can speculate all day and night and make up stuff. It's fun. Thanks, Harvard, for uh, doing this study. But I want to give you the next scarier prospect here. Assuming that they're just aliens and they're spying on us, I got bad news for you. That one night stand you had, y'all was banging a decoy. Look at this story from the Washington Post. Nigel, the world's loneliest bird, was no victim. He was a hero. This is a sad story. So this is a gannet. And Nigel was a gannet. They were trying to attract the birds back to the island. And so what they did was they made decoy birds. And uh, Nigel, this one lonely bird, finds this island, sees these decoys and thinks, hey, my people, flies there and lives there, builds a nest and lives amongst a bunch of rocks. Now that's creepy, isn't it? The ducks, the birds, they can't tell the difference between themselves and a rock. Do you think that if aliens were sufficiently advanced enough to travel the cosmos or time or whatever you think, they would not be able to create humans that could uh, blend in? You know, it's funny because based on our level of technology, we would assume uh, it's going to be like an android, right? Like you'd cut the person and then you'd see like wires and like clear plastic and we'd be like, it's a machine. No. They would just genetically engineer humans, but with alterations so that they probably couldn't reproduce and they would obey commands and they could collect information. The information could be downloaded. So we wouldn't be able to tell the difference. We make concrete blocks and put them in front of birds and the birds are like, my homie. If aliens could travel the stars, they will genetically engineer decoy humans that can transmit it or not even that. Just grow a human, train them implant something that relays information from their brain, like a Neuralink advanced thing. And then they send the humans down to collect data on, on other humans. In fact, maybe they don't even have to use decoys. They could literally just implant a human baby to collect data and then they wouldn't even know. There have been a lot of stories. These are interesting about like weird metamaterials they find implanted in people. And this is where the conspiracy theories come from. Who knows? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. If you were to give a tablet to a medieval queen, she'd call it a magic mirror. She'd crack it open. They'd find runes inside. They wouldn't know what it was. Sufficiently advanced technology is, it's, it's, we, lack, we lack the comprehension to understand it. Now, take a look at this bird. This bird can't tell, tell the difference between a rock and another bird. For all we know, that they, they do a scan on someone. They're like, everything seems fine. There's like a little spot there, but that's probably nothing. A fatty corpuscle. And it's beyond our comprehension to understand that they actually have attached something that collects information. In fact, what if they used entangled, you know, uh, particles to relay information that we can't even detect with modern instruments? And so there are people walking around oblivious, and they are basically just decoys spying on humans. I don't know. Who knows? But I suppose it's funny that Harvard did this study and are actually entertaining this right now. Many people have been speculating for the past few years that aliens are coming soon. And we haven't brought this story up in a long time, but uh, in 2020, everyone was like, aliens must be next by the end of the year. And then the election happened, and no, we didn't get any aliens, but maybe, maybe. You know, people talk about how there's this, this I don't know if it's conspiracy theory, this story that during the Cold War, aliens shut off all of our nuclear weapons before we could wipe ourselves out. And I'd imagine it'd be very easy for them to do so, be it an advanced human species or magical elves, whatever you want to believe. They could probably disable our weapons very easily. Maybe it's more like Harry Potter and they're just like, you know, uh, El Missolo Destroyo or I, I don't know. This, they don't speak Spanish. I think some kind of Latin. But, you know, they just turn the weapons off with a magic wand, whatever. Who knows? At least from our point of view. If that's the case and we are heading towards a massive collapse coming up in November, then perhaps the aliens will reveal themselves when we're good and ready. Maybe they never will. Maybe the reality is Earth is just one big experiment. I, I, there's a bunch of uh, hypotheses. One of them, uh, I don't even call them that, but they're ideas. One of them is that all planets only have a single form of life. The idea is like, why would life evolve any differently? So some people speculate that life goes on the path of a single a species that grows and advances and Earth is the intergalactic zoo where they mashed them all together to see what would happen. Now, I don't really believe that because, you know, that general idea of, of evolution seems to make sense. But then there's, you know, South Park made the joke about how Earth is a reality show. Maybe that's it. And then there's simulation theory. 
What if, my friends, this this plane of existence is simply an AI generated reality that serves one purpose? Entertainment. Think about it. You AI simulate a planet and a people and then have that simulation generate shows which are or are not successful. And then for the average person, not only is the simulation itself a show, the Donald Trump show, but you can watch Friends. In the, sh- in, in the simulation, there are TV shows and video games all just being produced. And then, of course, there's MMO theory. The idea that we are not in a simulation. We're in a massive multiplayer online game. Because we're a bored higher species that brought ourselves to this plane of existence to uh, have fun, to play a game without consequence, I guess. You know, I don't know. Life is what it is, and all we can do is live and do our best and be better people. So I hope that's what you're doing. And I hope you enjoyed breaking away from World War III, Civil War, and the crisis in the United States and in Europe to talk about aliens. Hope you had fun. Next segment's coming up tonight, uh, later at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.